The heat waves aren't just setting records on land, they're also setting records at sea. Ocean temperatures are warming at an unprecedented rate, with 40% of global oceans currently experiencing a heat wave. It's the largest global ocean heat wave recorded since 1991. Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z joins me now from Key Coast Beach, Florida, with more on that. Ginger, NOAA says these unusually warm ocean temperatures, they don't just impact marine life, they can have a significant impact on coastal communities and economies. Can you explain why? Oh, of course. I mean, there's no question that when I've been down and the water temperature is in the 90s, some places mid to upper 90s already at this time of year, there are major implications. That's four to seven degrees above average for this point in the year. We would see this more like late August, early September. So what happens when we heat up then? It's going to be likely unprecedented. Here in the Florida Keys, you can see that drone video that we took earlier. Uh, these keys have a coral reef that is just south of them that protects them uh, from storm surge. When you've got 95 degree water temperatures, that is super fuel for hurricanes that could develop. But also if you kill off and bleach, which is likely happening as we speak, the coral, that is going to be a major issue when it comes to absorbing that water. It's nature's defense and it's dying. And so we'll be today actually going on an urgent coral rescue to save some of that with the Florida Aquarium. Now, the water temperatures are, yes, well above average, but this is what else happens and why the economies, yes, are impacted because the fish life changes, everything changes, but also, when you're here on vacation and usually you have the water temps in the 80s and then the land is in the 90s. Well, that's a big enough difference that in the afternoon you get what we call a land sea breeze. You invite that breeze in. It's brilliant. It really cools you off. But this year, because the water temperature is so close to the air temperature, there's very little movement, very little mixing. That means stifling heat that does not see relief. Diane. So no relief on land, no relief when you go in the water, and no relief from the breeze coming off the water. Ginger, is there any relief in sight for the unrelenting heat on land or at sea? So that's the unfortunate part, is we started these consecutive, unprecedented, obliterating records about six weeks early in places like El Paso, Las Cruces, New Mexico, seeing some of those really big changes. But remember, this is a big part of it. We've got a blocking pattern. Part of it because the Bermuda High is usually further north and stronger, but it has been further south and weaker, allowing those cooling trade winds to stay south of Florida. So particularly here, we have been seeing this excessive heat for days and days on end. And unfortunately, even though today only ends in the mid-90s, which is one of their, quote, coolest days in the last couple of weeks, it's going to get even hotter through the week and here's why. The Saharan dust that is normal to be pulled in with this high pressure system is going to tamp down any storms and clouds, so that makes it hotter, but it also can kind of trap heat. You'll also get some really colorful sunrises and sunsets, but you will be baking and barely able to stay out. So it's not just, again, in South Florida, it's not just along the Gulf Coast or through Texas, but all the way back to the desert Southwest, where I think it's really important to remember, because a lot of people are saying to us, Come on, it's July, it's the desert. No, Tucson now breaking their all-time number of 110 plus, and they will keep breaking it this week. When you shatter records instead of just break it by a day, that's not just regular July. And, and Ginger, the eyes can deceive us sometimes because looking at you right now, it looks ideal. I mean, you're, you've got a breeze flowing through your hair, the water looks beautiful and clear. It looks like it must be amazing there. What does it actually feel like when the air and the water are that warm? When we stepped out the car at 5 a.m., the heat index was already 97 degrees. So that's the thing, is that early in the morning, sure, it's doable. Um, we actually do have a breeze, being that this is the coolest morning, so the land was cooler than the ocean, so you kind of had this offshore breeze develop. But when it comes to this afternoon, ask me again. Take a look. I won't be able to have enough powder to make me look uh, like I'm not a sweaty mess. <laughs> well, thankfully, you did a great job on your makeup today. Uh, Ginger, oh, we you. so appreciate you coming at us with this important information. Uh, it's so important to keep this all in mind, and we appreciate you going out there to get it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.